Have you ever just thought about words? You know, maybe you say a word and you try to take a little bit of time and do a mental exercise of what does that word really mean? Let me give you a word that um, maybe you've heard on a movie. We were watching a movie just recently or a TV show. I don't know what it was, but it was kind of like one of those old English movies, you know, like kind of like Little Women or like Downton Abbey or something like that, you know, where it's like castles and, you know, um, things like that. And so at that time there was kings. And when you would say something, you would, if you were to ever talk to the king or the queen, you would say, yes, your, your majesty. I just want to take a moment and I want to do a mental jog what is, on majesty, the word majesty. Do we, do we know what majesty, do we think about, do, I mean, I don't know, we have a, we, we really don't understand king, majesty, just the majesty. What is the majesty of God? I, I, I didn't look this up. I'm not coming here to give you an explanation this morning on this. I just, we were singing songs about majesty. Sometimes we sing songs and we're, we're more aware of the tone and the notes than we are the words, you know, and um, there's some really powerful songs talking about Hosanna, talking about just, just words that, that, that should really take you and me into a place of reverential awe. And that's really, to me, what I, these words are. Like when I think of majesty, when we think about what we're talking about in the, over the next couple of weeks, even just last week in, in the, the coming of a king, the coming of the king, um, or the arrival, however you want to title it. But really, we're just talking about Jesus is coming. We're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is coming. What does that mean to us? What does that mean to my uh, just my eyes, like my countenance? What does that look like? What does it look like when my kids, you remember when they were little and at the shopping mall, I don't know if they still do this. My kids have graduated from this season, but and and just I, I've grown up in, on, in just the way that we parent. But there was like this something in people's eyes when they would hear, oh, Santa, you know, Santa. Um, they, and I'm, I, and I, I, is that what it is for the Lord? Like, what does it look like when we think about, is it Santa? Because we have this great expectation. You know what we're doing? We're often watching. We have kids staying up all night to watch for. But do we have, are we staying up, watching for the arrival of majesty? Like, Majesty, I think of like Santa. I have been getting these pictures on my deer camera of these deer. This this one camera in particular. I have multiple cameras, but this one camera, the way it's positioned, it, for whatever reason, I get more pictures of jumping deer, like literally jumping deer. They look like they're flying, like on the the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer claymation. Matter of fact, I just got one yesterday. It literally looked like Prancer. Just, I mean, he's he's even have like the. Not just the jump, but like he, it was, it's awesome. And so, and I was thinking, that's the magic corn right there, you know, because there's a feeder there. And, and so, but you know, when you think about Santa or you think about, and, and you're like, are we talking about Santa in church? Yeah, we're talking about Santa in church. I'm making a point here. When you think about Santa and, and the story of Santa that came from the love of God, that's this where the tradition started. And so many times we move from the place of origin and we lose it's lo- what, what really things are about. And that's where we can get lost in these things. And that's why it's so important for us to teach our kids not just to, not to be looking for Santa, but to be looking for Jesus. This is what we're, we're talking about, looking for him coming at Christmas, but also his return. But there's, there's something cool and fun about, about, about Santa and, and these things. Maybe uh, if you were younger, you would, you'd tell, um, we're, you would tell your kids about how Santa would come down the fireplace, right? And he'd come down the chimney, and you'd say something like, well, uh, and, and the kids would, if they're real smart, they're like, well, how doesn't he get burned? You know, and it's like, oh, well, he just, you know, has a fire retardant suit. Have you ever seen the Santa Claus, right? I mean, <clears throat> uh, the, he has magic tinsel, right, you know, on the Santa Claus. Anyway, he, there's all these things that they, they have. They have a snow globe. They can see everything. There's just this, in a sense, magic about or this just like, wow, he can do the impossible. He can do amazing things. He knows everything. He can make things right. He, we give 
Do we hold that for our king? Like we do, like we tell our, you know. And so just this idea of, of just pausing for a moment uh, this morning and just uh, not make believe, but truth. Not make believe, but truth. There really is one, maybe some of you have in your house, that Christmas tree that says, one, has the month of December, and it has number 25 circled, and it might say countdown to Christmas. And you know it's on the, and we celebrate Christmas on the, what day? 25th of December. And so we're counting down. Did you know there's a countdown to the Lord's return? Except for you don't know the day or the hour, but we do know the season, so we're in the season. And are we looking, are we counting down the days? Because when we count down the days, Pastor Evan was saying, hey, who went shopping? Why did some people already go shopping? Why do some people think like, oh, I need to get out there? Because the days are getting closer. So because the days are getting closer, there's certain things that we do because we're looking toward the, ex- and, and there's an expectation of not just Jesus, but majesty coming when, when he comes and he returns, what's it going to be like when he comes in his glory, when he comes, when, when, all, when, when, the, when, the, when the church rises to meet him in the air? Tell me, have you ever flown in the air before and heard a trumpet that, 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 that sounds to, to such a degree that everyone in the earth hears the trumpet and you're caught up? And what, what does it sound like when you hear the trumpet? Do you get goosebumps on goosebumps? And then something, I mean, what is it, or, or do you, do you or when you hear that sound, do you just go like this? Do you go, mm, you know, huh? or do you just hit your knees? Like, what does it look like? Do we, do we imagine, I mean, I remember saying time as a kid, imagining what, what it would be like for Santa to get to my house. I even, I remember one time because my imagination uh, and, and tried to stay up so late. We, when we lived on River Place, this is one of our places we lived uh, anyway, when I was little, and you could see out there on the Gold River, my mom and dad might be watching, so giving them the history of where this is at. Um, and, I, and I remember telling them, I saw Santa. He landed out there right by the river. You know, I thought he did. I mean, I thought, I, I mean, I went to sleep, I must have dreamed it because it was so real, so real to me. So real to me. So real to me. Can I tell you your imaginations become real? Can I tell you that we're going to get to this this morning, but there's a lot of imaginations, things that we think about, that have become more real to us than, than what is real. You know, there's waves that have become storms, and the, the waves have stopped but they're still sloshing on the inside of you. Imaginations are pretty powerful. So I just wanted to just, before we get into it, I just want to just pause this morning and just invite the Lord in to show us or just... Um, I mean, I just give them pause. This would be a, these are fun exercise. This would be a fun exercise to do with your kids to think about how did you, would you describe the king coming? How would you describe? What would it? What would it be like? What? What is? And you can look in Revelation. You can look in in the Bible where you talk. Oh, he has this robe, and, and yet it glows. And yet, and 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 in, in Revelation twenty two, sex about when when we when we enter heaven, there will be no more night, and there will be no there will be no need for for light because he's the light. So what does it look like? I mean, what? Like just you can you can kind of give some you know red suit, white hat you know, little ball, you know how Santa always has that red suit, and you, you kind of have this, kids have this idea and understanding of Santa, but do we have an understanding of the one who has fire? Where's the fire? In his eyes. But is that fire coming out and going, rah, licking people? Or is it just this, you know, I mean, these are, these are real things. Do we imagine? What is it, you look at John trying to talk about and describe having met with Jesus and talking about how he, he's trying to describe. How do you describe majesty? I don't know, but it would be a good exercise to do it. 
be a good exercise to describe and then to look and see and, and talk about this with our kids. Like, what does this look like? Uh, tell me about a cherubim and a seraphim. Tell me about creatures that, with heads and tell me about these things. Because for some reason they've become scary when there's, there'd be a rejoicing. Like, I, they don't look like they're, they're, it's, they're in the glory of God. And where there's glory and there's no darkness, there's no night, how many of you know that the things become glorious? Have you ever seen, uh, I'm not, I don't know how we're, we're on this for a little bit, we're just going to talk here for a little bit, but have you ever seen maybe um, creatures in caves, uh, not, not thinking of Gollum, <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's say a salamander or a fish or that has no access to light over generations and generations? Or maybe the deep fish in the sea that they, they don't come up. There's a fish called the angler fish. How many of you ever seen the angler fish? And it has the big jaw and it has the little the light out there. And how many of you know when you look at these creatures of the deep, and I would say it this way, creatures of the dark, they are, you know, creepy. They're creepy. But can I tell you, creatures of the light, they're not creepy they're glorious wow what's it going to be like to be able to go there just like Philip did with the eunuch who was translated because somebody needed what's it going to I mean these are just tastes of things to come What's it going to be like that you could just be here and then you could be there? I mean, is it like Star Trek? Beam me up. We just... Like, what is it? There are some imaginations that, that we really could give our time to. More than the cares of what's not going to happen or this or that. Look, imagine majesty. It changes, it changes um, possibilities. It changes possibilities when you when you see and you expect and your 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 view and your uh, is heightened to the you know like as a kid where they heighten their level of who Satan is Satan 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 kind of right or not really um, sometimes that's what we we call him in the, in the church but again come from Saint Nicholas Saint whatever love giving gifts okay but we can get distracted there um, I remember Michaela, you got so in trouble at school for telling kids Santa's not real. Um, sorry. I'm not one of those like, oh, can't have any fun, but I think that kids got to know the truth. And if we're t telling our kids the truth, then what are we telling them? Like only ha truth here and not there. I mean, I understand fun and tradition and things. Can I tell you, you're here today not out of tradition. So how you manage that really is not based on what you like. It's not based on what your family did. It's your life. It's not your own. This is a, here's an approach that's, I'm kicking a bunch of cows right here, sacred cows. Don't talk about Santa and don't talk about Christmas. I'm kicking it. Here's why. Because our, we need to kick some things. You can have fun. You can absolutely have fun. But how you tell your kids about stuff, you don't just, we just do what we want to do and live how we want to do, live how we want to live. I'm going to watch what I want to watch on TV because that's it's my life. I can do what I want. Not if you are been bought with a price and you're to glorify God in your body, which is not yours. It's his. So don't give me this line of junk when you're supposed to look different than the world. We're supposed to look different. I mean, I can have fun and not be a stick in the mud like anybody else. I mean, I, 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 think, it's, I think fun is fun. Fun is fun. So long as our kids know fun is fun. I, I like watching Rudolph in the claymation and, and, you know, watching Frosty skirt through the snow. And, you know, I, I think it's, I, I enjoy having lots of fun. But, but there has to be some, something that is sacred. There has to be something that is holy. There has to be something that's real. And there is real. And what is real is Jesus is coming soon 
What is real is Jesus came and we celebrate Christmas as Jesus came. But when we look to Christmas in this holiday season, why people give more, why people are, there's more generosity, why, why there's hope, why all of these things are happening is because whether they know it or not, they're exercising and their eyes are, to, are towards Jesus. And when our eyes are towards Jesus, when our family's eyes are towards Jesus, when my eyes are and my imagination is towards him. Just the same way as a little kid imagines Santa and he thinks, oh, he can come down. Well, we don't have a fireplace. That's okay. He can and suck down, you know, through the radiator or whatever. There's a fireplace that magically appears. I mean, they did a pretty good job with Tim Allen in the, you know, all of a sudden there he is, you know. There's different possibilities because you held it in high like truth. Because when you hold it as truth, it, 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 there, there's different possibilities. Because it's true. So you don't know how, but you know it's true. You don't know, you don't know if he's going to have to come through there and create a fireplace and pop through. Or if he's going to have a key and come through the front door or what. But Santa's going to get here and he's going to get me my presents and he's going to get my sister the coal. You know, he, he's going to get here. He knows if I've been naughty or nice, he's going to do it. I'm right, I wrote him a letter, and he, I, my, I'm going to get the weenie whistle, even if it takes a lot of years. Some of you have not seen the Santa Claus by Tim Allen. All I'm trying to say is there's possibilities that are brought to you, and there's expectation and waiting and looking and anticipation simply because you hold it as truth. And it is truth. But we have made, we've held, we've held things that aren't true in such a, such a way sometimes that that entertains and makes things that aren't true even possible. What if we had faith and trust and hope and and expectation of of the truth, the, where freedom is found? Because where you know the truth, oh, there's freedom. What if? What if your expectation and your view of majesty was one of such that, I don't know how, I know I don't have a chimney. I know that there's no way. I know that it looks like this, but God will make a way. And so, and there's, and so because I held truth is there's freedom. And he that knows the truth, that I walk in freedom. And now there's not the heaviness of, of this and this and this and, and all of these things because what I hold is the truth. And so because I hold the truth, I hold imagination and I hold in my heart majesty and greatness and expectation and arrival. He's coming soon. This is just arrival that he's, but yet he's coming, but he's never left. He comes and he lives in me and lives with me and he's not leaving me and he's not forsaking me. He's here right now. What he's, it changes my, uh, what's possible. And then because I realized that not only is he coming again, but He's with me here and now. It changes how I approach every day to where I invite him into my day to day. And I can live in a house with my wife and we cannot be together. You ever been there? Have you ever been in a house with maybe your kids or your wife or and, and you could though you live in the same house, you maybe eat at the same table, even eat at the same time, you, you're not on the same page. It's just things are broken. You know, you ever been there? Broken. This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about broken things. We're going to talk about a coming, the arrival of a king, the one who is, he brings peace. When you think about the word peace, uh, so many times we think of the word that we, he, in, in Greek, which is Irene, which means tranquil. But the, the peace that we're going to look at here and just, talk about this morning is not tranquility it's not the silence in the -na 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 -na, you know whatever or just the quiet river at the deer stand you know and then you hear the crunching <laughs> it's shalom which means whole it's the simplest definition is wholeness and it's interesting how we think the, with the word peace in that word, it means whole, to have peace, the peace of God that passes understanding, to be a guard, a wholeness that can guard my heart. And this is in Philippians chapter 4. I can have a peace that, that surpasses my understanding, that sets a, it's a guard over my heart and over my mind, wholeness. 
It's interesting, though, how this word peace is being wholeness. The, the opposite is true. When you would say somebody's life is falling, they're not with peace. So like we see peace as truly being whole. But if somebody's life is just a, a mess or it's going to pieces or it's falling apart, it's the absence of peace. There's not wholeness. It's just it's, it's broken. And so we're going to talk this morning about the arrival of a king um, and, and, and the arrival of peace or wholeness or completeness in our lives. And so as we think about majesty this morning, I want you and I, and I, all that word, that, that, that communication was really about us to imagine majesty bringing wholeness. So we're just going to take a second, you know, we're going to exercise a little bit, and we're going to pause, and we're just going to imagine majesty, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, bringing peace or wholeness into our lives. Thank you, Lord. Completeness. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Completeness in your body. Completeness in your marriage. Completeness or wholeness in your relationship with your kids. Completeness in your finances. Let me describe to you completeness in your finances. It's not being self-sufficient. It's knowing your source. Every time you go to take oil from the jar or meal, it's there. It's just the Lord providing. So there's no stress. It's wholeness. It's freedom. Whatever you say, do, Lord. And he gives you all things richly to enjoy. Father, thank you today. For your majesty. We ask you, to Holy Spirit, to just uh, be the teacher. Enlighten us. Uh, our hearts show us. We thank you for the imaginations you've given us to, uh, to, to look, in a sense, uh, beyond even this here and now uh, to the future, to, to tomorrow, the hope of tomorrow. Uh, we, we invite you here to be a teacher to us, and we honor you in this place. Have your way in this service and in our, uh, in our lives uh, today and from here forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to jump, jump right in this morning to uh, the arrival of the king. Peace, peace is, the, is what we're talking about this morning. And I want to I pick up in Luke chapter 2. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, actually, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and obey what is written in it, because the time is near. The time is near. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. The time is near. Like, we're counting down. We're counting down to Christmas. And as we come closer to Christmas, this should be a reminder every year, every year that there's, we're getting close. We're getting close. There's a countdown. When we come, you might even make a little addendum, you know, as you being a parent and you wanting to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, you, that your children would be taught of the Lord and great would be their peace. You might even make a little uh, addendum and make a little design thing that you get to put on there, like on your little advent calendar or on your little countdown to Christmas. You're talking about Jesus is coming soon. It's just something to remind you and to remind your kids and keep it before you because this is why you put it before you because you, you make the vision plain. I don't, I don't know. You might. It's up to you. Everything. Isn't that interesting? He leaves it with you. The time is near, he said. So, but can I tell you that, that um, something that we're, what we're really talking about as we talk about the coming of the king is, is we're talking about this season uh, and really, you could call it Advent. And I, I don't want to take and get off into this uh, where Advent came from. It, it's not something that's really even originated uh, in in a sense um, like from Christ or from from like uh, 
Jewish tradition or early Christian tradition. This is something way later that was to help the people of God, Christians, to turn their focus back to Christ. As you come in, and sometimes we got to have things that help us turn our focus back to Christ. But, but can I tell you that, it, that I had written this down earlier, but the Advent is greater than any event. And so many times we're looking to the next event to, to create that hope or to say, oh, I'll be good when I just get to that place of the beach. I'll be good when I just get to that place of, uh, of, of enough money. I'll be good when I just get to that place. Can I, there, there's no such thing. So here we, let's go. Uh, so all of Revelation, while we're talking, and I wanted to read that uh, this morning, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, is that all of Revelation is truly a countdown. It's a countdown. If you read, and actually I say if you read, right now we're in a Bible. We've been reading the New Testament. We are in Revelation right now. I think I'm, in, I'm on Revelation 8, okay? Uh, I, think, I think that's exactly where we are. We might be on 9. We might be on 7. I'm, but I'm in Revelation 8 right now, and I've actually read quite a bit ahead, um, but as far as for myself. And so, and the cool thing about this is, in asking, you know, how many of you are doing the Bible reading this year, the New Testament in a year? I've seen so many people say, yeah, I'm doing it. And one of the things on the app, it, you can just click on there, and you'll see exactly where you're at. If you fall off a day, you can catch up or whatever. You can be driving in the car, and you can hit the plan, and you can go in there, and you can hit play, and the scripture will be read to you. It's cool. I'm excited. About, I'm excited that it's been something that in this house that so many have stuck with from not just the beginning, so I, but all the way through the end. I believe there's new habits that have been created in this body, and discipleship is on the grow. What does that mean, to really be a follower of Christ? And as we come into this next year, we're not going to just read the New Testament again. We're going to add to it Proverbs. So we're going to be reading two chapters a day. So we're going to be reading the New Testament again this year, and we're going to read through Proverbs. And that's what's going to be on the app on your plan. And you know what's going to happen when you read wisdom every day? And you're going to read the same wisdom every day for 12 months of the year. 12 months, you're going to put it, begin to put into practice. And you're going to be, become a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. And having just went through because I did it. But no, you're going to say, yeah, I need to do that. I need to, mm, my, my word needs to be softer. A soft answer does turn away wrath. So I, all of a sudden here, because I've, I've learned how to practice or dribble or do the layup, I, I know how to put the ball off the backboard you know, on a fast break without just boom, you know, because I've, I've, I've rehearsed it. I've went over it enough times. So now I'm like, hey, you, you're, a, you're, you're such a blessing. <laughs> There's something that happens as you put the word before you again and again. Anyway, so we're, we're looking at um, Revelation. And, and so right now, uh, all of Revelation is the countdown. It's all about this expectation. And I love this in verse three. He says, blessed is the one who reads this. Like he's, you're actually blessed are those who hear and obey what, like you're blessed when you read this book. Like there's no other book in the Bible that says, if you read this book and you read it out loud, this is what's so cool, uh, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Uh, why do we know that? Because we heard it. Because somebody opened the book. Somebody read. I ran it with oh, it throws such a clatter, you know, like open the sash. You know, like I'll, I'll, I, I don't know. The, I just know the beginning part because it was somebody spoke it to me. Somebody told me about it. This is this book right here. You, this book of Revelation, instead of imagining all like we could be reading this out loud to our kids. Anyway. So, all of Revelation is about a soon and coming king. A soon and coming king. So, we're doing the countdown to Christmas. There is a countdown. Uh, it, we don't know the day or the hour. We do know the season. And, and so, let's go here. Luke chapter 2, 10 through 14. We, we, we started here this last week, and we talked about how there was this great news brought to these shepherds that were in a field, starting in verse 10, Luke 2, 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. So why, what we're talking about here, this is not a special crew or some unique group. Like the message of Christ is not just for, for us 
you know, that are in churches this morning. This is for every person. Every person that's at home today, easy like Sunday morning. It's, it's for every person that, is, that, that doesn't know Christ, has walked away from Christ, has been hurt. Okay, It's for them. A, a message of great joy. He said, I'm bringing to you a message that's for all people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. I, I, love, I, I love even that picture here. He said, you'll find it. Can I, I, just, I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking about uh, just maybe your kids. And maybe as your kids grow up and as you grow with your kids, sometimes it's just like, I, I, I don't know any kid that just... just you know, you never have any thoughts of fear. The enemy never plants any thoughts of fear about their destiny, about their future, about will they love the Lord, will they serve the Lord. But I love this statement. He's like, you'll find it. I just, I just heard the Lord just saying as I was getting ready, they'll find, he, he'll, you'll find it. You'll find it. Like we have to change. Our, we have to answer some of those words and, and, and say, thank you, Lord, that they'll find it. They'll find them. They'll find them. They'll find them in, they'll find them wrapped in a little baby. It wasn't like it was like, oh, it's, you'll find this baby wrapped in, in the most un, 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 you know, imaginable or un, um, a way that you would have, would have imagined or uh, re, like, you know, the king coming in a, in a, in a stable. And, you know, you would think it would have been like on the palace. But they found him. They found him. God showed him. God led him to, to Jesus. God, God's knocking. God's bringing, he's, he's announcing in the field, with, he, he's announcing to them. And I'm just announcing to you, they'll find them. And suddenly there appeared an angel, this is verse 13, uh, with great multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. So there's this, this, this announcement Glory to God in the highest. And then he says, peace to men. Peace here, wholeness right now on earth. It doesn't say one day you're going to have peace. It's here on earth, peace. Peace on earth and, uh, and, and his goodwill or favor towards you or towards men. The favor of God. This is an announcement. With, when Christ came, it, it, this announcement was there's peace and God's favor here and now to you. That's so cool. I don't even know that I should even use the word cool. That's so wow. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. That's, that's, that's John 3, 16. Do we, do we recognize this? A son is given. God so loved, he gave. This is a pretty heavy verse, actually. Unto us a son is given. Anybody have a son that they're wanting to give away today? This holiday season, you know, where everyone's looking for good gifts. Anybody have a son they want to give away? I don't think anybody has a son they want to give away. But there was what the Lord loved you so much that he said, I'll trade. Wow. I'll give my son. So that I could be with you. Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a heavy verse. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, a Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is loaded with descriptive words that are adjectives um, that describe what he does. So when you are needing help, and you need some counsel, you know what you can, you can do? You can seek Jesus. When you need, when something is too heavy for you, you know what you can do? You can call on, call on Jesus. When, when the hope of, like this is running out, the everlasting Father. Well, uh, I just royally screwed this up. And I just didn't do this, and I just didn't do this, and I just didn't do this. I'm really not worthy to be called your son. I'm just going to go back to my father. 
his house. And I'm going to tell him that I'll just, let me be a servant in your house. And instead he said, I've been looking on the hill every day for you to come home. Get the robe, get the ring, get the calf. This is a picture of an everlasting father. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I'm going to give you just uh, a picture into my life sometimes. Not my life. I would say moments. Uh, and I think every person has had a moment of anger. Anybody ever had a moment of anger? Okay. If you have, um, and, and I, ha I have this. I have this, this thought, and I wouldn't say it's a thought, it, it, or maybe it's like a fear, or maybe it's a memory, or it's something. Um, and it wasn't just when I, I would get angry with my kids. It was, was when I was a kid, and I was angry with my, with my dad. You ever been a kid and been angry with your dad? I'm talking like really angry just because something happened. You got in a fight. Is there anybody here that could say? Okay. Well, I remember... Um, this one case in particular, when I had gotten in a, a fight with my dad, um, and it wasn't it wasn't intended, but it got there. You know, it was about Halloween candy, and uh, and I brought some Halloween candy, and I offered it to my dad. He said he didn't want it, and then he changed his mind and he tried to take it, and I grabbed it, and then we started a fight. That was silly, just two things going on, but it got heated, very heated. And, um, and I was mad at my dad, and he got upset with me. Okay, Anybody ever get upset with their kids? Okay, I, I, I'm going to get to me Okay, here in a moment. So there's, in that time, I was actually working with him. I was, I was 19 years old, but I still lived at his house. And, uh, and all these details, Landon's laughing at. I'm giving you these pictures because I'm trying to paint a picture of anger. Just severe anger to where we went back to work on the job, but things weren't resolved. You're angry, and you go back to work, but things aren't resolved. That's a great time for imaginations. So I, I'm talking about these, I'm giving you a window into a moment that I'm sure you've had where you got angry. You got angry with your dad. You got angry with your kid. You might have got angry with the driver, and you're sitting there, and you can't get, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and you imagine how you could, I wish I had a thing of bolts I could throw out the window and pass them and just, you know, something. I don't know what you're thinking. You know, I thought of that, you know. <laughs> a biker told me that. He keeps on his dash. He said, when someone cuts me off on a bike, I, he said, I just keep, I keep all my spare screws and bolts, and, and, I, and I just throw them, I pass them, and I just throw them up in the air and go, I was like, wow, that's, that's some thinking there. Anyway, you get, when you get time for anger to, to stir, what happens is imaginations grow wild. And at first people in here, y'all would be in jail had you acted on these imaginations. I would be in jail if when you get so mad, you're like, what in the world? Where did that come from? Imagination. Vain. Self. Imaginations. And this is, so there's these pictures of, of sometimes in our, in our lives, and I'm still on this everlasting father, okay? Where, where you, you, get, you get into that place where uh, I, can do it, I, I can do it on my own. Just give me my stuff. I'll go get it done myself. I don't even need to be here. I'm going to move out, you know. I don't need you, and you don't realize that he taught you this. And what you're going to go put to work, and what you're going to, is so much of the principles, and so much of the work ethic, and so much of the this, and so much of that, that and the character, and all this. And I don't need you. Okay, go ahead and get out of there, and give me all that you got. Because what you got was not just what I put on your back. It's what I put in you. But there's just this rage, or uh, 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 and and then you finally come to yourself, and and you go and you apologize to your dad, and things are are right. But now, having been a dad, on the other side, if I was in my dad's situation, because I've been in my dad's situation, where I got angry, my son got angry. 
the same imagination that a son has about stupid dad. I'll just I'll show him. A father can have about their son. I don't know how else to say that, but just in a less colorful way. Let me give you an offer. <laughs> Not once did the Lord imagine that towards you and towards me. Instead, he imagined how, in my imagination of leaving, how can I entreat him to come back? Can I just keep coming in? Never once did he say, well, you know, I'll let you back in, but you know, you really da 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 and you really screwed this up, and da-da-da-da, and you really, and you really, and you really, and you really. He said, no, he said, hey, buddy, I... I got this. I paid the price for you. Wow. This scripture is so powerful. It's not just, it's for unto us an everlasting father. And then the commander, the prince of peace, that's the commander, one who has authority. What is a prince? It's one who has authority over an area because of conquest. Or because of heritage, because of what they were born in. And so it, princes were, they were the warring part. They were the warring part of a kingdom. They were the ones that, as a young man, you go, you're the one that would conquer. And you're the war. This is Jesus. Do you know he was a war? He, he was sent and he waged war for you and me. Amen. This is powerful. Here we are looking at Jesus, the soon and coming king. All right? So kind of setting that up. Let's go, uh, let's go to um, John 14. I'm going to pick up here, kind of piece last week's together with this. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. He says, um, or let me, and let me just define the word troubled there. Properly put into motion to agitate back and forth, to shake to and fro. He said, do not let your heart be troubled or be put into motion. That which is put into motion that should be still. Okay, this is this definition. So do not let your heart be troubled. Uh, believe in God. Believe also in me. We talked about belief. We talked about even what we're t we talked about at majesty at the beginning of today. Belief matters. This is why my, when my son told the teacher and everyone else that Santa's not real, there was a problem because there's a lot of kids' belief was shaken that day. And now... They had to pick up the pieces. Troubled, shaken, another word. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And he goes on to talk about how he's going to, we talked about this last week, the hope of heaven. He's going to prepare a place for us. You know, wow, so it's so awesome. So, so he said, don't let your heart be troubled. And so I want to look this morning at our main text in Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. It says, and this is the story of Jesus in the boat, okay? Because we're talking about peace, how Jesus comes and he says, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Uh, when Jesus came, how many of you know that Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trials, you're going to have trouble, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So what does it mean for a king, the king, the arrival of a king, the prince of peace to come and to be in this place and to come and, and take up home and reside in you and with you? Well, what does that mean to my troubles here and now? How do I face today and the troubles that he's promised me I'm going to have today, I'm going to have tomorrow? What do I do in this moment? Where, where do I look? Do I look for relief and try to just have everything be calm? And, and I, I constantly am working and working and working just to, just to have a little rest? Or, or what's, how, what's, what's, the, what's the promise here? Let's look here in Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. When the evening came, he had said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side. After they had dismissed the crowd, Jesus took, excuse me, after, after they had dismissed the crowd, they took Jesus with them since he was already in the boat. So why was he already in the boat? 
because he was teaching the crowds from the shore that day. So he was loving the people and he was teaching them. This is Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower. Have we ever thought about this? He taught the parable of the sower from a boat. This is where he was at. He, this is, he was teaching. If you look through, the, you're like, wow. So you go read Mark chapter 4, and just now, and here's a new mental picture. Jesus is in a boat talking to the crowds because if he was in on the shore, he couldn't do anything. It would be like the women with the issue of blood press, where he was pressed. So much so that they, the disciples said, what do you mean, Jesus, who touched you? Everybody's touching you. So they set out, and you see this, this picture that Jesus borrowed the boats plenty of times so that he could speak and that the people couldn't get to him. And yet, let me say it this way, so that he could get to everyone. It wasn't so that they couldn't get to him. It was so that he could get to everyone. And this is the importance of the Word of God. When the Word of God is spoken to you and me, He's getting to me. Like He's getting to me. When you come and you hear the Word of God, He's getting to me. God's showing up. I mean, he's, he's calming my troubled heart by His words. He's, he's speaking. To, he's, he's answering those fears. He's, he, okay? So He says this. Uh, he went over in the boat, and there, was, and, and there were other boats with Him. Soon a violent windstorm came up, and the waves, uh, the waves were breaking over the boat. So, soon a violent windstorm came up, and the waves began to come over the boat. The, wa- the word waves, I, I just found myself spending some more time in this passage. I've read it many times, and I thought, what is waves? What is waves? Because there's more here than just a boat, and Jesus in a boat, and some disciples that are in a storm. He, this, this is written for you and me and my, our encouragement. What is, the wave, what is the word waves? It actually comes from the word meaning to swell, like to become more and more pregnant. That's what this word comes from, the word waves here. It comes from the word meaning to swell. And so I was thinking about that. At, at what point do the waves, at what point are the waves too big for you? Like you can, because we think this a lot of times. I can handle this. I can handle, I can handle what's going on because my savings account has six months supply. So because six months supply, it's okay. If, if I lose my job, I'll find another one. Nobody panic. Everything is going to be okay. You know, got the three month hump. About right here. But what if what six months? What if there's one month left of the six month reserve? Is that six months or is that nine months pregnant? Where where are we at in the swell here? How big of this wave? How big are the waves that you handle without Jesus? How big are the waves that I handle without Jesus? We think we can handle quite a bit of wave. And the reality is there's no swell at all there's no wave at all that we truly handle without him it's just that the wave didn't tip over the didn't get all the way inside it was a it, it, it's it, the, you were managing the waves the waves were bigger than you this is why you were you were dependent upon something not just self you were dependent upon something we're always dependent upon something. Some, sometimes the waves don't get over us because we just take another one of those. I don't know. We all, oh, I just need a little. The waves are a little big, so I just, need to, I just need to veg for a little bit. The waves are a little big, so I just need to get out and... And, and have some of my alone time and do what only, you know, what happens there stays there. I, 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 I'm dependent more than I know. You're dependent more than you know. Ne- never are you truly self-reliable or self-sufficient. You're always leaning on something. You're always leaning on, I'll get that tool to go make some money. you got to have something. Never. So at what point is the swell 
in your life. And I'd ask you this, where, where's the swell at right now in your life? Where's the bump? And have you invited Jesus in to that swell? Or are we going to wait till it gets in the boat and overtakes and overrages your my life? This is not how God designed us to live. So the waves, the waves were began to break over the boat so that it was being swamped. You ever felt swamped? What's that word swamped? Fully loaded. All the way. I can't take it anymore. One more thing. It was the straw that, right? I mean, this is where, have you ever been to the place where the waves, the waves, the waves, the waves, and we ha still haven't reached out to Jesus? But we'll reach out to Jesus when I lose my mind. We'll reach out to Jesus when, when, when there's no more and I have no other place to turn. Even though, you know, we, we're, we, we, we love Jesus. We know Jesus. Jesus is in our house. Jesus and me, he's in my heart. I mean, we're together just like me and my wife, just like me and my kids. In the same house, we're just not on the same page some of the times. Can, can I tell you that you can be in the same house and the same car the, and, and you don't invite somebody into what's going on? You're not together. Though you're in the same boat. Though you're in the same car. Though you're in the same house. How does somebody come in and help you with what's going on? You invite them in. Can I say more often than not, you have a conversation. Isn't that how? Or you say, you say help. Or you express, hey, what's going on? Well... <sighs> You know, I have this party coming up this weekend, and I have this and this and this and this and this and this and this to do, and I just am feeling overwhelmed. It's like, oh, okay, well, can we make some phone calls, and can I, can I, is there something I can do? All of a sudden, the swamp isn't so swampy. All of a sudden, the load gets lighter. I'm just talking about a conversation with the husband to be of a help in the house and a conversation where we get the kids involved and, hey, you know what, mama's not cooking dinner, we're going to get pizza tonight. Or there's something, what about a conversation with majesty? Lord, and at what point? When the waves start to swell, when the, when the storm starts. When the storm starts, let's not wait to, like, let's not go nine months. Let's, let's, let's just, this is what every day, we're going to look, oh, it's so good. Okay, you're going to see just this, just this invitation to say this. Jesus, come. Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, into my, in, just, just invite him in. Come, Lord Jesus. We're going to look at this, and you're going to say, well, he's never left us, and he's never forsaken us. Well, why I get that. Neither my, we're, we, me and my wife are still married. We've been married for over 20 years. But sometimes I need to just say, hey. This is what's going on. I need to invite it in. And you're going to see here in Revelation, the end of Revelation, that actually this is what the Holy Spirit says, and this is what the church is to be saying. Come, Lord Jesus. This is what we're to be saying. When you say come, then you're looking. You're looking for him, for his assistance. You're looking for his help. You're looking. So we go. let's keep reading here, Mark chapter 4. And so the, the, so the waves began to break over the boat so that it was swamped or loaded to fill to full to overflow. But Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. So they woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Where have you been? You ever, have you ever done that to the Lord? Like, where are you? Oh, oh, I just didn't know. You, you, you've been doing so good just doing everything by yourself for the last six months. And you, 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 I, I'm right here. I'm not leaving. I'm, yes, yes, sir. At your, he's never left. He just hasn't been used much. He's just resting. The people were pressed up against him. But those who were in the boat... They were all over here, and Jesus was over in the stern. Can I tell you that you can be with Jesus and have had, had been with Jesus to the point where he is up in the stern, though you're in a place you could be right next to him? 
The crowds are all around him wanting to just touch, just touch his garment. Just be close to him. And you can be in the boat and be like, ha, ha, yeah, you know what I mean, John? <laughs> yeah, Peter, <laughs> look at this, watch this. Uh. And, and we're busy about our just all our own things. And Jesus is up there in the boat. We'll get him if it gets bad enough. But otherwise, we're just going to leave him there. You know why? Why is this? Because we're not looking for him. We'll look for them when we need them. When do you need them? Three months? Six months. Swamped? No, I got this too. Okay. I want you to see what they actually, some of the language that is actually said here. Then Jesus got up and rebuked the wind. So what did he do? He didn't say, what do you mean, where have I been? Uh, hello? No, he got up and rebuked the wind, silence. He commanded, and it was still, the wind died down, and it was calm, perfect. He said, why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? And here's what I've learned, and this is what I want to express today. Peace is not the absence of something. It's the presence of someone. Peace is found in presence. Maybe you have a little kid that doesn't like thunderstorms. Where do they come when there's a thunderstorm? To your room. What can you do? You can be there. Presence. Peace is found in presence. It's not found in the absence of something. It's in the one who sent to, in, in complete you, makes you whole. Presence. This is what, what's happened. This is what's happening. He's saying, do you not realize who's with you? Why do you have no, why do you have no faith? Why are you so afraid? Do you not realize? Why are you scared? Because if daddy's here, you're not scared. If, if your father, and here's what they go on to say, who is this guy? Who is this guy in our boat that even the wind and the waves obey? Who is it? Like, do we, do we know him as we're supposed to know him? Because we don't know who he is. Like, if it was like, you are the, the Christ, the Messiah, you are, then it would have been like, well, that's God. This is, they don't know him like that right now. They don't know him like what, we're right, right here, intimately, from the inside out. And, and, and I want to just go to Philippians 4.13, uh, and you've maybe quoted this many times. Um, really, all of Philippians 4 talks about having a peace of God that passes understanding. How does that happen? Philippians 4, 6, and 7, when you, ca when, when you pray, when you give your anxiety and your cares to him, and then as you go on into Philippians 4, it says, think on what's true and what's lovely and what's of good report. And then you get into Philippians 4, 13, and it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Maybe you've quoted this. Maybe you've seen this on a sneaker. Maybe you've seen it on blacked out paint. But it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I Look up the word through. It's like saying this, I can tighten, I can get that, uh, that nut off of the pipe under the sink through that wrench. Or you could say it this way, with. Just say with. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Here's what it looks like. Lord, I just welcome you into this home right now. Lord, just come, come help me be a, a father. Come, just Lord, just come. Just, just invite. You're just inviting him in. You're saying, you're, here's what you're saying. I need to do this with you. I need to, I need to look for this job. I need to do it with you. I need to make this decision about whatever it is. I need to do it with you. As a matter of fact, I've already made some decisions. I need to back up and pause, and I need to say, Lord, were you? In this, I can do all things through Christ or in Christ who strengthens me. Lord, were you, were you in this? Was this through you? Was this decision made with you? I have to ask myself these things and get back with him because I can't break the nut loose without the wrench. Can I tell you, I can't do these things without. I can't do it without. I can't, I can't do it without, but I can do it with. And so Christ in you, Christ, not just Christ in you. Can I say it? When you get with Christ, you can do all things Amen. through him, Amen. with him. The secret of this, this verse is really your invitation 
to him. Can I tell you, when you invite Christ into your life, you maybe you've heard this, uh, uh, you ask Jesus to come into your heart to be the, your Lord and, and your Savior. You invite him into your life. Can I tell you that you never stop inviting? We're never to stop inviting him into our life. Wholeness in my life comes from just that invitation. Lord, help be with me here. Be with my fa- be with my family. And you're saying, he's never left. He's not, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's go to Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 22, and I'm going to go to 6 and 7. I'm going to go to uh, 12 and 13 and 16 and 17. All of these are the words of just Jesus. If you have a Bible that has red letters, you'll find that these are just the red. This is Jesus' response. Okay? And so... um, Starting in Revelation 22, verse 6 through 7. And he said unto me, these are the words, uh, these words are tr- trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of, this, of the spirits of, of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servant what must soon take place. And here's what he said. And behold, I'm coming soon. Behold, I'm coming soon, he says. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the, this book of prophecy. So he says, I'm coming soon. That's what he says in verse 7. Then if you jump down to verse 12, he says, Behold, hey, everybody, look. Look, I'm coming soon. Bring, uh, bringing my reward or my recompense with me to pay or repay each one for what he's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I, I want to... I, I, I had thought about just reading everything together, and then I was like, do I read it all, or do I just read these, these pieces because I didn't want to take away something from the word. But just to bring clarity this morning, just making this point of, I'm coming. Here's what he's saying. I'm coming. I'm coming and my reward is with me to give to you what is for what you've done. For, and this is where I go back to this morning, like when Pastor Evan was saying, who's got their Christmas shopping done? Why did you do it? Why are some people thinking I need to get it done? Because he's coming or Christmas is coming. So there's things that we're doing because... Christmas is coming. There's things that you and I are to be doing because Christmas is coming. Jesus is coming. Because Jesus is coming. So Jesus is coming. Can I just announce to you this morning, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. And this is what he's saying. And he says, I am the beginning and I'm the end. I'm the beginning. It's where you start. It's not three months, six months, nine months. It's at the start. I'm the beginning, and I'm also the one that'll. I, I'm the one that holds it all together. The beginning, the end. I just, just remember. Look to me. Look to me. And it goes on to say this in verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things, for the churches. I'm the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star. Verse 17. And the Spirit, and the bride or the church, says, "Come." And let the one who hears this message. Say, come. Come, Lord. I went to a school. My parents put us through. After moving to a small country town to the big city and going to some public school, inner city public school, and us coming home as kids, not really looking like what we once did, they said, we're going to put you in a private school. We're going to put you in a... It costs a lot of money to put us in this Christian school. The name of the school was Maranatha. Maranatha. Maranatha Christian Academy. Maranatha just means this, come Lord quickly. Come Lord quickly. We didn't realize we were saying this all the time. Come Lord quickly. Come Lord quickly. Come Lord quickly. But it says this in verse 17, the spirit and the bride both say come. So I think of it like, I think, wow, we're, we're to be saying to the Lord, come. When do we, should we start saying Come. At what point should we start saying to the Lord, come? How about today? How about in our prayers? We're looking. We're looking. Because we don't know if it's the 25th or the 18th. We do know that he's going to come like a thief in the night. In other words, let me say it this way, unannounced. Let me say it this way. Surprise. Majesty. I don't know what does it look like, but I don't think we should be waiting to say, come, so that 
because I'm looking and I'm expecting him to be coming, that my works are with him and I can do the things that I'm to be doing and I'm not wore out and I'm not tired and my life is what God wants it to be, which is a fragrance to carry his name in this earth so that people can come to Christ. And the, even as we come to the end, people, the house is just getting flooded in. It's like a stadium. The game starts at 7. And you'll see it. Like you get there, if you get there early, 6.15, you're like, hope there's a game tonight. But as you get close, all of a sudden there's lines to get in. Can I tell you that God's wanting right now in this time, in this season, to use your and my life because we're whole, because we're not fragmented, because we have invited his presence in no matter what's going on, that we carry his fragrance, we carry his presence. In 2 Corinthians 2, the end of the chapter, 2-2, two, two, the end of, uh, I think it's 16, 17, but 2 Corinthians 2, the end of the chapter, he says he uses us to carry or to spread a fragrance of him everywhere. Can I tell you, carrying him is a whole lot it happens when we're not broken. When, when we're broken, when we're fragmented, when we're not at peace, we're not giving off the smell of Christ. So invite him in, just like the Holy Spirit said. The Spirit, said, the Spirit and the bride both say, they say, come. And let the one who hears this say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who desires take the water of life Without price. Wow. And this is the last passage. Or you can go ahead and give me your, your Bible. I didn't leave it in my notes. This is the very end of the book. Verse 20. There's only 21 verses in the last chapter, Revelation 22. He says this. I'm going to read Revelation 22, 20, and 21. He who testifies of these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So what would it look like today for us to simply say that? When do we start saying, come, Lord Jesus? Just at dinner, come, Lord Jesus. We're looking. Come, Lord Jesus, looking for him. And we, 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 we talk about this. You want to see God move in your life? Start seeing him move. You start looking for him? Man, be amazed at how he's always been in the boat. You'd be amazed at how, he, how his abilities release the calm storms, how his abilities release the heal bodies, how his abilities are released not at two months, nine months, six months, just all the time because we're saying, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. As I go to work today, come. As I get up to minister this morning to, to, the, to the church, Lord, I'm asking, just come. Be here today. Not my words. Come, Lord Jesus. In the relationship that's broken, come, Lord Jesus. Come. You'll become more and more aware of presence of majesty, of, let me say it again this way, of possibility. Because with God, all things are possible. There's a hope, but there's not just a hope. There's a whole. There's a peace. He who testifies of these things says, yes, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Let's stand this morning. I want to close this morning kind of like we opened up this morning's message, just um, inviting the Lord in. I know we imagined before. Uh, you can change your imagination to an invitation. Just by what we were talking about today. Just get Jesus Get, get, get Jesus. Hey, Jesus, come come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me show you this. Hey, when you have a testimony of something cool that happens, tell Jesus. Tell Jesus what? He's like, yeah, I know. Isn't that cool? 
Start the conversation. We, we gave out to, to our, our leaders, uh, just the coordinators and leaders of, of this house that are serving in capacity of scheduling and oversight. And thank God for the gifts of every person in the body. But we had a Christmas party and rather than, um, and so we got, we got these journals for them. And they're a five-year journal. It really feeling like the Lord's wanting to see discipleship. It's really increasing and just being aware. And, um, and they're a five-year journal, which simply means there's just a little section for each day to just journal what God's doing. What is he saying to you? What? And, um, and I had to write in the front of a lot of them, you know, so your hand. But I didn't want to write a ton of things. I didn't want to print something and just shove it in there. I wanted to write something. So I was asking the Lord, what do I write? What do I write in there? What do I write to work for the reminder? And I wrote to the guys. And I got the word, um, ask, seek, knock. You know, anyone who asks, anyone who seeks and knocks, and then remember. And I kept it really short like that because here's what happens when you and I simply invite Jesus in. Hey, Jesus, by telling him, hey, look what happened. Here, see, look at this, look at this. It's like this. This happens. Hey, can I talk to you real quick? And that real quick, have you ever had that? Real quick? Because I have a, yeah, that, no problem. Real quick because it's 11.55 and I got a meeting at, at noon. So, yeah, okay, it won't take but a second. Okay, you want to walk with me? Yep, yep. Okay, yeah, I see you over there. Uh, hey, I'll be right with you. I'll be right with you. 1230. What happens is a conversation. Your real quick moment, you inviting Jesus in for what he's done, telling him him of your testimony. All I'm just saying is, let's, let's live with him. Let's carry him. Let's go with him in everything. Because guess what? I'll be good where I'll go and I come into encounter somebody else. You guess what I got with me? Jesus. The conversation with Christ is so important in this day and age. It's so important so that others would hear or, or experience Him. Amen? So we're going to see and invite Jesus uh, this morning into our relationships, into our finances, wherever you need to invite Him. We're going to just take a moment uh, and do that right now. And... Um, Thank you, Father. We just invite you in. Thank you, Lord. We invite you in. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring vision to our homes. Bring order to our days. Purpose. Direction. Lord, come. Bring healing. In that relationship, come. Come, touch minds today. Heal minds of ways of thinking, pathways in our minds. I just, Lord, I ask you just to come today and heal minds. To fill in the channels, the cavities in the, in, in the paths. Do a new thing. Come, Lord. Come into marriages that huh, we thought were over. Come. Restore love and compassion and passion. Come restore, Lord. Restore my desire. Restore desire for my children. Restore desire. For my spouse, restore desire for you. Lord, come. Restore strength and hope. Lord, come. To my family, come. Father, we honor you today. And we thank you for your words. And a reminder to simply invite you in. We trust you and we look to you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Before we go, I want to give an invitation. I want to share a testimony about that invitation. I gave an invitation in the house and no one raised their hand. And a testimony came to me that was very encouraging. And sometimes you just need a word from the, you know, somebody's encouragement to cause you to keep going and doing certain things. And I'm sharing this because I want us to set our expectation for not just in this house. But I get a, I got a, a, a message after, after service, and the message was, thank you for praying that prayer online because I had people that I've been talking with receive Christ while watching today. And I think it's important that we recognize that our lives and what we're doing here, it's, it's beyond this. And we're to take Christ beyond these walls. And we're to do it not just here, but even here. And then there. So I just wanted to share that testimony because sometimes um, for me and to mix faith, you know, even when you give a message or an altar call, when you don't have faith, or you don't have trust that somebody needs to hear it, you can almost just like, it, it's not that important. And really these times and these moments, we, especially when it's getting close to La Fiesta or Del Trio, um, can be lost. Where we don't stay hooked to the end. I know it's 12 one, but like we're talking, it's the time for somebody to meet Christ today. That's what time it is. They've, they've, they, they've heard from him. They've heard about his love. They've, they, when the word of God is, is spoke, he accompanies it. So he ministered the whole time. And so today, if you're here this morning and you have never made the decision, uh, or if you're online and you've never made the decision to surrender your life to Jesus, but today you're saying, I need to make a decision and a choice to follow Christ, the Bible tells us that if we just we, we do that with the words of our mouth. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. We believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. Jesus says, Lord, and we're saved. It, it, could it really be something that starts that simple? Yes. It, just like as we read in Revelation 22, he says, Come drink of the water that has no price. Come drink. This, this is a free gift. And so if that's you today and you want to give your life to Christ, maybe you, you would be saying this just the same way I said today. Even you invite Christ in, come. You would say this to the Lord. I want to invite him into my life to lead every area of my life. I want you to lift your hand if that's you. Every head up, every head, uh, eyes open. It's okay. This would be a great opportunity to just declare Jesus Christ this morning. Lift your, and just tell him to lead your life. Lift, lift your hands, both hands if, if that's you so I, so I can see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're in your living room or wherever you're at, in the car, go ahead and lift your hands to him. Just say this. Just say, Father, today I surrender to you. I say, come. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God sent for me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose again and paid the price that I couldn't pay. You truly are awesome. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer, go ahead and leave, type in the comments or reach out or tell your friend. Um, and then get plugged in. I even say that for people here. Man, get plugged in. Get connected. Let life flow to you, through you, from you. And uh, other than that, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. Uh, or if you need prayer or healing in your bodies, we'd love to lay hands on you. The Bible says, you know, lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. But otherwise, we'll see you Wednesday night to put blessing baskets together. And God bless. Have a great week.